all of them, but one of them that's very important is control underscore files. And what you'll do is you'll list the full path names of these three control files if you're going to have control files, or three of them in your database. All right, so that's the second major piece of storage in an Oracle database. The third piece, this is your bread and butter as an Oracle database administrator. These are your online <coughs> redo logs. Now, what is stored in the online redo logs? There's three major pieces of information. First of all, there's all of your DML. And reviewing from the intro course, DML, data manipulation language, would be all of your inserts, your updates, and your deletes. And there's really two pieces to each one of those entries. If you do an insert, there's going to be the insert. And what is the opposite of an insert? A delete. So it'll be like an insert and a delete. And when you do an update, there'll be an update and an update. And when you do a delete, there'll also be an insert. So there's two pieces. We call that undo and redo, or redo and undo, excuse me. So all of your changes made to your tables and indexes and so on are going to be stored there. All of the DDL gets stored there in your online redo log group. By the way, these are groups of redo logs. And on the board here, I'm showing you three groups of redo logs. Uh, you need two to have an Oracle database, you're probably going to end up with having a lot more than three depending upon your applications. But DDL stands for Data Definition Language. That would be your Create, your Alter, and your Drop. All those commands are stored in your online redo log group. And then your commits are also recorded there. To me, the, on, the current online redo log group is like a recorder of major uh, changes that are going on with your Oracle database. And the information that's in this redo log file will also be in this one. Now this is a group. In my drawing right here, this is group one, this is group two, and this is group three. Oracle Corporation recommends that you multiplex your redo logs. In other words, we've got two members here in the group. And you want each one of these members on a different device on a different controller. So if you lose this redo log, member one of group one, you still got member two. So this is member one of group one. This is member two of group one. This is member one of group two. This is member two of group two. And this is member one of group three. And this is member two of group three. Now, when these redo logs fill, we're going to find out later that Oracle performs a checkpoint. It'll do a log switch, and we'll start writing to this group, group number two. And when group two fills, or when we cause a switch, you can call it, you can force a switch. We'll do a checkpoint and a switch, and we'll start writing to the third group. And when the third group fills, guess what we're going to go? We're going to go back up to the first group. So these are your online redo logs. All right. Now, these redo logs are used for, one other thing, are used for recovery. That's your bread and butter as an EBA. Yes, ma'am. When this, if you go back to G1, does it get overwritten or we just yeah, move that information somewhere else? Good question. The question is, when these fill and we go back up here, do these get overwritten? And the answer is yes. Now, if you're running an archive log mode, when these fill, we're going to copy this information out here. And that's why I have these out here. These are referred to as archived redo logs. We will spend a lot of time in the future talking about the difference between archive log mode no archive log mode, how to take your database and put it or place it in archive log mode, or how to go backwards. Uh, by default, generally when you create a new database, you create it in no archive log mode, which means when group three fills, 
you just come back and automatically overwrite what's in this first group. But if you're running an archive log mode, that will never happen. This group, will, you'll never switch to this one until this has been archived. If it hasn't been archived, if there's a problem, if this directory over here is full, your database will hang. And we'll talk about that later as well. Now, a very important concept here and a term. The most important definition for you to learn today is what is an Oracle database. An Oracle database is comprised or defined as three types of files. Data files, control files, and redo logs. That is an Oracle database. So I'm going to label this Oracle database. Now let me just finish the files. We mentioned the archive redo logs if you're running an archive log mode. We also talked about this SP file, the server parameter file. In Oracle 7, 8, and 8i, there was no such thing as an SP file. There was a file called the init.ora file that was an ASCII file that you could use an operating system editor to make changes. With the uh, introduction of Oracle 9i, you can now use this SP file, which is a binary file, and the way we change it is with the alter system command. One of the most important things you need to learn how to do as an Oracle DBA. And then this other file here that most Oracle customers have is what we call an Oracle password file. And there is a utility that you use to create this file and to make changes to it. And the utility is ORAPWD. That's the utility that you'll learn to use to create that file. So that's an overview of the storage. And we're going to drill down into each one of these three types in later chapters in the course. Again, this is the overview before we actually get into the architecture this morning. The second piece that we have in any Oracle database is memory. Now, Oracle has a name for its memory. And it's referred to as the SGA. Some people like to call it the shared global area. Other people like to call it the system global area. And if you don't want to fight about it, just call it the SGA. It is shared. All right? And it's important that that SGA fit in real memory, if at all possible. Now, there's different components of the SGA. In Oracle uh, 8, 9i, 10g, and 11g, they keep adding different segments of memory. I can't possibly put all these on the board this morning. But what I have placed up here is what you'll find uh, in most databases from Oracle 8, 8i, 9i, 10g, and 11g. Every database will have this section of memory right here, and this is referred to as the database buffer Cache. When I first learned Oracle, we used to always call it the database buffer pool, but now they're calling it the database buffer cache. And I'm going to split this up. Those are supposed to be squares. And each one of these squares is referred to as an Oracle data block. All right? And there's four major block types that you'll find in the database buffer pool. Remember I mentioned earlier these files here, these data files, you can have data in them, you can have indexes in them, you can have rollback segments in an undo segment file, and you can have temporary files. So in memory, you can have four major types of blocks. You're going to have dirt in your database buffer pool. Matter of fact, it was my ex-wife.